Today I'm working on making up some hoses for the dry sump oiling system on this car. And the next hose that I have to make up is going to go from the oil filter housing down to the bottom of the oil cooler. The easiest way to make hoses like this is with AN hose. And the numbering system is dash, a number, and then AN. So this is um, dash 12 AN, this is dash 10 AN, this red hose up here is dash 6 AN, and what the number means is the number of sixteenths of an inch of the ID of the hose. So 12 AN is going to be the same as um, 6 over 8, which is going to be the same as 3 over Four, so it's three quarters of an inch ID. Ten AN, so that's five eighths of an inch. The six AN is going to be three eighths of an inch. And then you get the fittings. There's straight fittings, ninety degree fittings, forty five degree fittings, a whole variety of fittings. And they have a, a threaded part that threads onto, you know, whatever your your nipple is. Or in this case, you know, these are pipe thread fittings. And the other end, the end for the hose, has a taper of some sort and then threads. And then there's a kind of a nut or a collar that's going to thread onto it with the hose coming out. And if you look inside this nut, you'll see that there's ridges on it. And so that kind of grabs the outside of the hose, forces the hose up the taper. And as the hose goes up the taper, it makes a tight seal. The hose itself typically looks like this. This is how a lot of people recognize it, the stainless steel braided hose. I personally like the cloth braided hoses. So like the stainless steel braided one, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. I don't know how if it's going to be blurry because it's going to have a hard time focusing. But there's actually two layers of stainless steel. So it's rubber, stainless steel molded into the rubber, another layer, you know, an outside layer of rubber, and then the stainless steel on the outside. And this is relatively hard to flex, and it's also likely to, you know, if it abrades, you poke yourself on the wires, it's, I'm not terribly fond of it. Where this cloth stuff, it still has the metal, the stainless steel, inside the rubber. So it's rubber, stainless steel, another layer of rubber, and the cloth exterior. And this is more flexible and it's a little easier to work with and if you rub it it's not going to cut you so and it comes in different colors black and red and others so this is my my favorite kind of AN hose with one fitting in place the one down on the bottom of the oil cooler I'm now going to figure out where I want the where I want to make my cut for the top one so I'm going to kind of start figuring out roughly you know how I want the hose to bend I think for this, so it doesn't bend too, you know, too tight a radius, I'll probably run it about like this. And once I figure out close to where I want to cut it, I'm going to take a piece of masking tape or any kind of tape, I'm going to wrap it around the hose pretty tight, like that. Now I can hold the hose in to see exactly where I want it to be and then I can mark it where that taper starts and then that's the place where I'm going to cut it. So, I think this is going to be fine about here. For cutting AN hose, you have to cut through the rubber and the steel, and in this case the cloth braiding. My favorite method is with a, a die grinder with a cutoff wheel. They do make, uh, some people use like a cable cutter, but I find that kind of crushes and deforms the tube. So I use this method. The only downside with this method is you have to clean off the rubber powder, the rubber sawdust when you're done. So I've got my blade, my uh, cutoff wheel on here. I'm just going to carefully just cut flush, or I'm just going to carefully cut perpendicular to the hose right at the mark.
blow the rubber sawdust away and just make sure it's cleaned out and now it's ready for the fitting the first thing I do is peel off the tape and I actually try to pull it a little bit at an angle so that it doesn't cause any extra fraying and then I take my hose end and I make sure that all of the little threads tuck into it and then I will twist and push it into place and what I'm doing is I want to make sure that when I push I push it so that the bottom of the hose is all the way flush with the uh, start of the threads or the inside of the threads so I have a little way further to go there we go so the hose is coming all the way up to the bottom of the threads. Now I'm going to take the, the other part of the hose end and I'm going to make sure that the taper goes into the pipe, feel it go into the pipe, and then I start threading it in. Then I find the easiest way to finish threading it in is putting the fitting in a vise, and I use an adjustable wrench. They do make special aluminum wrenches, AN wrenches that don't scratch up the fittings as much. I guess I care more about the performance than the actual how it looks. And you just thread it all the way down and you'll feel the nut bottom out. So it doesn't have to be like tightened or torqued to a certain torque, but I always do it until the nut seats all the way down at the bottom of the fitting.